My name is Ryan and I live in India and I make photos and I make films, mostly documentary films. And for many years I traveled all over the world and I've shot a whole bunch of different stories. I used to be a war photographer for many years. And uh, but now I prefer telling animal or people stories. How do you become a photographer? So it's very easy. All you need is a camera. Then you have to learn how to use it and there you're a photographer. So today, everyone in the world is a photographer because everyone's got a camera. Everyone's got a, a cell phone so, and, and they have cameras. So everyone's a photographer. But owning a camera is like owning a pen. Everyone's got one, but very few people know how to write a good story with it, you know? A camera is nothing without the head behind it, you know? I mean, this, this, this is the real camera, your, your, the brain and your heart, I guess, you know? So anyone can point a camera and take pictures and some people take some very pretty pictures but but what what's behind the camera actually makes the pictures you know the person behind the camera so when I, when you tell a story and it could be writing one it could be making photos it could be shooting a film what do you want to say what do you want to share with your audience so once you know what you want to share then you have to figure out now how do i share that how do i share what i feel about this story with the audience so that they feel the same thing so that's it it's as simple as that tell us about your favorite projects working with wildlife so i spent many years making films about so-called dangerous animals and uh, very recently i did a photo story on elephants actually and elephants and the relationship they share with their mahouts and a mahout is a man who who bonds with an elephant for life he looks after the elephant, he tames it in many cases if it's a wild animal that's been caught and brought to him and they share a very special relationship. This, this photograph is of a mahout, his name's Girish actually, the guy who's sitting on top of the elephant and that elephant was a very problematic elephant, you know, and when I asked this mahout, so uh, aren't you scared? So he says, I I've spent many weeks living next to this stockade and building this elephant's trust in me. You know, and finally he lets me touch him and I touch his whole body and he said it's it's when you touch the animal that's when the bond begins so this this little girl's name is Sahana I think she was only eight years old but she's very friendly with this elephant named Kaveri so Kaveri is a very gentle elephant uh, she loves children and all the mahouts would let their kids play with Kaveri you know and hang around her all day Again, what he does is He's feeding this elephant with a big ball of what's called ragi so, and they mix it up with coconut and they put rice in and they put fiber in and they put in uh, grass and they boil it into these big lumps and sugar and salt and they give it to the elephants and the elephants love Did you ever have any formal training? I'm actually a trained molecular geneticist dropout. I was going to get into a PhD program but I fled the scene during my masters and uh, I set up a little ad agency and, and one thing led to another and I ended up making documentary films and then photography. How old were you when you first started? I remember taking my dad's camera when I was about 13 or 14 and taking a couple of pictures with it and in those days we didn't have digital cameras, we had film cameras and uh, I was given one roll of film and I had to make every shot count so I learned how to use the camera and I started taking decent pictures and I really enjoyed it. I was very careful. Nowadays with digital cameras you just take like 10-20 photos and those days I would take one and you would carefully plan every aspect of that photo because you didn't want to waste the film. How did you choose which kind of photography to go into? I mean, if you're a freelance photographer, you take the work when it comes. And I've done a lot of shoots because I wanted to make the money, very frankly. But uh, but occasionally you get wonderful opportunities. And I find sometimes when I do films, I'm like, oh gosh, like I just finished one on frontline workers who are working um, to fight COVID-19. Uh, I was like, oh, I don't want to do this shoot, I don't want to do this But then when I did it, I was so inspired because people were so heroic. These medics and these doctors, and I, I came away feeling very humbled. So very often I don't necessarily choose the films. The, the stories kind of found me, let's say. And But uh, I don't think I've ever regretted doing a story. There's always an impact it leaves. And, and even if you're shooting a wedding, say, very often it's so nice to be a part of other people's joy, you know, even if it's in the context of being a photographer. What do you like most about being a photographer? Being able to work on my own. And if you get paid well enough, uh, you don't have to work all the time every day you you you're the you can work for just a couple of months in the year and the rest of the time you can write books and travel and hang out with your kids or go fishing i like going fishing 
and if you earn enough money you could you could live a very good life so that's what i like most about being a photographer you don't have to go to an office and you don't have a boss people feel awkward in front of a camera how do you get them to feel comfortable well it's a process i i like to make people laugh so generally no matter how embarrassed someone is you get them laughing and they're okay you know and end of the day you also want to shoot somebody as they are you know without pretend so even if they are a little awkward it's fine there's there's not there's, what's wrong with being awkward i i'm the most awkward person i know i i'll out awkward any one of you guys so it's okay so what if people are awkward in front of the camera then you shoot them being awkward in front of the camera you know and very often when they see what's nice about uh, uh, cameras nowadays is that a digital camera is you got you got a little preview you know uh, you got a little preview and uh, I mean, those are all doctors, which I shot in a hospital yesterday. So you can always show the person the photo, and and if they smile, you know, you know, you've hit done something right. What type of objects or things inspire you to take the kind of photos you enjoy capturing? I enjoy wildlife. I love wildlife. I, I like being out there, and I also like telling human stories. You know, because I learn more about myself when I learn more about other people, and plus you appreciate various aspects of your own life. which you might take for granted when you see how other people might live or people who might not be as fortunate as you can you tell us about a project working with human stories delhi is a city in india and it gets very hot in the summer in fahrenheit it's like 110 degrees and because it's so hot there are a lot of fires all over the city and the city is very densely packed so every summer you've got um, these firemen have to put out like 5000 fires in two months okay and it's very difficult because very often they don't have a lot of uh, equipment so over here you have a very low income area that's on fire so i was on the truck with these firemen we were headed over there and these were guys who were fighting fires with very little equipment and you know at great risk to their own lives i was on the ground with these guys and um, we came something really interesting happened okay and quite scary actually we came to this place and the local people were so upset that the fire trucks had taken so long to come that they started jumping on the fire trucks and like trying to burn the fire trucks and it struck me why would people whose houses are on fire why would they want to damage the fire trucks you know and what happened was uh, uh, we were in this truck and if you can see i don't know if you can uh, see but the, the windscreen is broken uh, the the people were so upset that the fire trucks had come late and we had come late because there was terrible traffic so we were stuck in traffic for like an hour and these are all the firemen inside the truck and they were as you can see they're so worried they're so afraid because people were throwing stones and they didn't know what to do and you know the, the guy is busy calling the cops he's like oh my gosh get us out of here and then something very nice happened you had a man jump this guy in the front wearing the striped shirt can you see him He kind of jumped in front of the bashed up uh, uh, fire truck and stopped the crowd. He said, "Calm down, guys, calm down." And he was uh, he he got them all to calm down. And very shortly thereafter, they started helping the firemen. It's a chemical fire over there in the back. The chaps are putting it out with foam and no protective gear. You know, they just just spraying each other down with wa with water. And see this guy? He's spraying the other chap down with water. he doesn't want uh, him to uh, it's so hot over here when i was over there when i when i left this area i noticed that you know there were rubber parts of my camera i mean uh which were like melting because it was so hot you know i only realized later and uh, these people lost so much they lost like most of their belongings you know it must have been so difficult for them i asked him i said can i take your picture he said please take my picture make sure it comes in the papers because i've lost everything so What was interesting about that photo was that about three days later, I went back to that same place, and the man had rebuilt his house in three days. Well, it wasn't a very big house; it was more like a room with an attached kitchen. But uh, he had got him. I gave him a little money. I'd given him a little money before that, and uh, he had rebuilt the house. He had put bricks. He had collected bricks from all over and rebuilt his house. So I was quite amazed that he had uh, managed to put it together so far. Have any of your projects led to social change? I wrote a story once about my sister who's physically handicapped and it won all these awards at Cannes at the Cannes Film Festival. I, I wrote it another filmmaker directed it 
and apparently in india it's helped tons of people adopt special needs children so a uh, children with special needs i mean people who kids who might be blind or physically handicapped who who uh, who didn't have families uh, apparently it helped inspire parents to adopt children with physical handicaps so i feel very good about that what is your inspirational thought or inspiration for children on here i guess everyone has their own road to follow and uh, at this age i think you should listen to your parents i wish i did more but uh, as life goes on you'll figure things out you know and and what you think is so awesome when you're like 15 when i was 15 i i wanted to become an astronaut and uh, changes you know when in your 20s you you want other things when you're in your 30s you want other things you know and i'm i'm just cresting the next hill and i'm like oh i should have become an accountant i'm kidding i i like what i do very much but what i'm trying to say is what you want changes as you grow older you know and it's okay it's okay to change but when it comes to photography or making films i love the life i love the life because it gives me the freedom and independence to to think my way into various situations and and also express uh a certain view and hopefully a, a more learned view than 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 not you know i hope <laughs>